again. It's been a lovely, lovely sunny bank holiday today, and uh, it's evening time now. It's just gone. It's just after seven o'clock, and I just suddenly thought I wanted to try something today. Uh, just a little experiment. It's something I've mentioned in a previous video, but um, essentially, uh, well, let me turn the camera around. Was our MG ZSEV been out today with that? Very pleasant trip out. So, yes, ordinarily, as I've, I've previously mentioned, um, I generally charge the Zero DSR from the onboard charger. So, because we're not in a hurry and it can charge, it can charge, um, it can benefit certainly from solar supply from this, from our Zappi unit. But uh, we'll, we'll come on to that again shortly. But there was there was a two part question really involving charging strategies. And the first one was, I, I posed it myself. Um, we have this Nissan Leaf granny cable, which came with our Nissan Leaf car. Now that car's been, uh, was up with um, my in-laws. So I didn't have access to that lead, this lead at the time. But what I was interested in trying was using the Nissan Leaf Type 1 lead in the Zero DSR Type 1 charge tank. Um, there's apps, in theory, there's absolutely no reason why it shouldn't work and the Nissan, and the Zero, sorry, should benefit from a faster charge rate from a domestic socket, uh, as indeed the Leaf does. So that's the first thing to try. I'm going to give that a go. Okay, so that's the plug in uh, what you've got to do to initiate the charge tank on the zero is you've got to have the power switched on so 79 percent at the moment okay uh, so i will do that it's not charging the contactor just went on you just heard it click there but it isn't charging at the moment um there you go that's off so i'm going to try and just flick this switch and turn on the granny lead and we'll see see how this responds okay so that's saying charge uh, saying re charge and ready so that's gone orange but this is erroring actually so it doesn't look like that's going to work so that's the first question answered it doesn't work uh, but nothing untoward is happening it's just the zero saying, uh, no thanks very much. Pity, that would have been potentially uh, another useful charging strategy, but that question's answered. Now for the next experiment, we've got the standard type one plug connected directly to the Zappi charger. And uh, so, like I say, again, ordinarily we'd put the ignition on to initiate the charge, but this is a slightly related question. I'm just wondering if, if we switch on the onboard charger, so it's going to start normal charging. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. That, I think that's answered the question. So that has started. I heard the I heard the Zappy contact um, connect then. So. Yeah. The onboard charger had initiated and the Zappi kicked in without the ignition on, on the bike itself. Sorry about the light conditions, are not ideal. Um, now that's just stopping at the moment, but that's fine because it's on Eco Plus, which means there's got to be sufficient um, solar energy coming in to initiate the charge. Um, that's this Eco Plus mode with the two leaves. But what we can do, so in theory, that's just now charging again from the onboard charger. It is still charging, obviously. <clears throat> the question is whether, without turning on the bike, we can now put this into e standard eco mode, which will give it a, a, a 1.3, I think it's 1.3 kilowatt charge rate and um, simulate what would happen if there were sufficient solar energy coming in. So let's just try that. Let's simulate eco coming up. Now contact's just kicked in and it says charging. So 
the fan doesn't always kick in on the on the um, charge tank so the only way for me to check whether that is actually um, now charging from both the internal and the charge tank is for me to flick over to the Zero app and take a look, which I will do now. Okay, so we can see from that that it is indeed using both the onboard charger and it's it's taking in an additional, uh, what is it on at the moment? It's 1.4 kilowatts according to the Zappi. So it's a combined 1.4 from the Zappi and whatever the onboard charger is bringing in, which is usually 1.3, but that looks like, well, you can see the charging watts moving up and down there. But it's certainly more than the onboard alone would give. So if I switch off the Zappi, let me just do that. I'll effectively put it onto Eco Plus mode again. Um, actually, can I just go straight to stop? Yeah, we can go straight to stop. It looks like it's still going to go through its time down, time countdown. Oh no, it's stopping. Okay, so the contacts just switched. We should see the charging watts drop down. And indeed, we have. So that's now just charging again from the onboard charger. Okay, uh, let's put it back onto eco mode again. So again, this is all without uh, without using the ignition on the zero itself. We're just flicking the zappy on and off to simulate uh, what would happen if we had sufficient solar energy. Okay, I've just put eco mode on. So yeah, the charging watts currently that you that's displayed is from the onboard charger. It does fluctuate a, f a fair amount that. It's coming from a domestic socket. Okay, three, two, one seconds. That's the contact kicking in. And let's see what the charging watts does now. There we go, back up again. But yeah, they're going to go up quite a lot initially because what it does, the Zappi, it initially puts it into effectively a fast charging mode and then it, it, it trickles down to its standard rate. So it kind of gives its maximum initially for the first few seconds and then it drops down, which you can see that you can see that that's happening. So now it's settled on 1.4 kilowatts on the Zappi uh, and combined with the onboard charger that's delivering that um, 2.4 kilowatts we can see at the moment, 2.5, 2.4. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, small update there. I just thought, having finished the video, I'd um, I'd just try plugging plugging the Leaf Granny cable in again while the bike was charging from the onboard charger. And as you can see, it's it is actually pulling in 3.4, 3.3. So I've seen 3.5 a minute ago. 3.5 kilowatts. So from two domestic sockets. One's obviously the the onboard charger but it has actually upped the charge rate so <laughs> you can discard the, the my initial conclusions of the first part of, part of that experiment it does actually appear to work the granny cable the leaf granny cable does indeed appear to work um which ties in with my initial thoughts that it should i don't i didn't think there was anything special about it particularly uh so uh, that's great news, um, potentially. You know, if you were travelling and you weren't sure or you d you knew you wouldn't have access, indeed, to level two charge points, this is another option, especially for those of us in 240 volt countries. Uh, let's let's again refer back to our friends Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman on their trip. You know, on the basis of this with two sockets at uh, 240 volts, which I believe South America does run on, um, contrary to the US, they could potentially have pulled over three kilowatts. All the more reason they should have taken the DSR. I might just try that with the key powered on again, as I initially tried it, and the onboard charger off, just to see if that makes a difference. So let me just try that. And we'll go back right back to the beginning and try the initial experiment again. So let's power on the bike, as you need to do to initiate the charge tank. Unless, as we've established, it's already charging from the onboard charger. So, bike is powered on. 
Nissan Leaf Granny Charger Cable is connected. Uh, that was just the con onboard contact. Okay, let's apply the power. Okay, that now says charging. But again, we're getting the error code. So interestingly, it looks like the onboard charger needs... Oh no, hang on. Spoke too soon. Well, this is strange. Let's try and turn the power off now. The ignition, I should say. Yeah, that still suggests it's charging. I'm going to go and have a look at the Zero app again and see how that's faring. Okay, interestingly, um, as you can see, that's hovering around about just under two kilowatts now. Um, the Nissan Leaf Granny cable does say it's charging. There's no fault light on that. And the green charge light on the Zero itself is flashing, as you just saw. But the charging watts don't appear to be moving much above. Well, they're not hitting above two kilowatts. OK, well, I'm not sure what to make of all that and how scientific that all was. But um, on the basis of the things I've just done and going back and redoing the first experiment, which didn't work initially, uh, I think we can conclude that the the option is certainly there if you've got the bike already charging with the onboard charger you can um you can charge both from the zappy or from the nissan leaf granny cable and you will get the highest rate in both cases doing it that way uh, it's potentially useful if you've got the um the dsr on the onboard charger for you to add additional charge via um, solar PV for instance it comes on when there's sufficient solar power that does work and it will bump up the charge that's really good news uh, the Nissan Leaf granny cable side of things obviously appears to work quite happily when the onboard charger is on it will give the best results doing it that way so and that all in a roundabout waffly kind of way um, is what I can conclude from this little bunch of experiments. It was it was useful to me to know all of that. I hope it was useful to anybody watching, any owners, any potential owners, anyone who's just curious about what it would do. Um, so on that basis, I'm going to call it a, an evening. Uh, thank you very much for watching and um, hopefully see you again soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.